In this video, I'm gonna take a couple minutes and talk to you about a step in the buying or more specifically financing process with the equipment that we sell that oftentimes confuses people. You get to the end of your packet and you see the part of the paperwork that requires insurance information. And the question often gets raised, what do you mean I need insurance? It's a mower. <laughs> Let's chat. Hey, maybe this is the first video you've watched from our channel. Maybe it's the 100th, I don't know. But one of the things that you will notice as, as you watch through some of our content is we're still a relatively new and up and coming channel. Uh, we've got a growing library of videos where we're getting a lot of stuff put out every week. But compared to some of the other guys, we've got Messics out there, we've got the Tractor Time with Tim's, some of those other bigger outdoor equipment channels. They're, they got a lot more stuff out than we do. The other part of that is for those of you that have noticed that my face just started showing up around on the YouTube channel. I've only been with Nolts for about a year and a half now. Uh, so I'm new to this idea. I'm new to the equipment world. I'm new to 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 the, to the tractors. I'm, I'm new to, to all of this that stuff. So we are learning together as we make these videos. Now, why do I say all that? I say all that to say that there are some experiences that I do have that have made themselves useful and translatable to the equipment world. One of those is that for a while I was actually an insurance agent. So for some of these guys that have worked here for years that, that actually don't even know quite as much about the, the backside of the insurance world, I've been able to provide some insight. And that is the point of this video today is to talk about some of those ins and outs of the insurance, how that comes into play when you're buying a tractor, when you're buying a lawnmower, when you're financing specifically those pieces of equipment, how it works, who you get it from, who, how much do I have to pay for it? Do I have to pay extra for it? And that's what we're gonna talk about today. So as equipment salesmen, whether it's tractors or lawnmowers or Avants or UTVs, we oftentimes find ourselves in this situation, unfortunately. We get through the sales process. We've, we've met you, we've, we've made a, we've built a relationship with you. We've, we've shown you the piece of equipment that we think is going to suit your needs. We've, we've given you the keys, we've allowed you to drive it. We've gone through the credit process. You're approved, you're ready to go. It's time to sign paperwork and we get down through some of the paperwork and we get to a page that reads something like this. By signing below, the buyer does or does not elect to obtain physical damage insurance for the machinery through a group policy arranged by the assignee. By signing directly below, the buyer acknowledges having read the accompanying customer agreement to provide physical damage insurance. And it goes on a bit, so it talked about that accompanying customer agreement. Let's take a look at that customer agreement, which reads something like this. I have entered into the above agreement under which I am responsible for providing insurance against all risks of, of direct physical loss or damage for the actual cash value of the equipment listed in the agreement set forth above. Or it says something, I affirm that I will be providing my own physical damage insurance coverage through the below listed insurance agent. And then there's a section there where you have to put in your insurance agent, your policy number, their contact information. And it's oftentimes at this point that we as salesmen go, oh yeah, uh, that's just for, it's covered under your homeowner's insurance, just sign there and, and you'll be good to go. But that's not fair to you guys. So there's oftentimes questions that come up, something along the lines of, what do you mean I need insurance for this? Uh, and I think some of the gap there between, between us as, as a sales team and those that are in the industry, oftentimes forgetting um, that it's not quite as simple as we think it is, is that we, we think that it's that simple. Uh, we understand the process a little bit on the back end that typically speaking it doesn't cost extra for anybody that it's already included in their homeowner's policy or in their renter's insurance policy. So we tend to forget that you don't know what's going on. So my intention with this video is to bridge that gap between the customer sitting at my desk going, what do you mean I need insurance? And me sitting at my desk going, oh, it'll just be on your homeowner's insurance policy. It's not a big deal. So how do we bridge that gap between the sales staff and the customer when it comes to insurance. I promise you, so we get to this video, that's what we're going to do today. Let's bridge that gap. So before we talk insurance though, I wanna talk about the financing process a little bit, both for you as the customer who's buying the equipment, as well as for us as the dealership, who is also buying the equipment. 
You'll see in our showroom, on our parking lots, that we have tons of equipment sitting around. We have uh, a bunch of tractors and crates back in the warehouse. We have mowers and crates in the warehouse. Where do equipment dealerships get this equipment from? It usually comes in one of two ways, one of two ways. Um, now, keep in mind again, I'm you've heard of the thousand foot view. This is like the 130,000 foot view of how this process works. So please take that for what it's worth. But one of those ways is, is a floor plan agreement with the manufacturer. Essentially, again, super overview, not detailed at all just a basic understanding of how this works, is the manufacturer essentially allows the, the dealer to take the equipment um, and borrow it until they can sell it. Uh, so it sits on the floor. They oftentimes will send stock checkers to make sure that we haven't lost that piece of equipment. Uh, and they will then charge us interest if we allow the machine to sit too long. The other way that we can fill our showrooms and our warehouses with equipment is to pay cash for them. So we can just buy the machine outright from the manufacturer. As you can imagine, uh, until you start to get hundreds, if not thousands of pieces of equipment on your dealership, this can tie up quite a bit of cash. So a lot of dealers oftentimes go with this idea of the floor plan or borrowing the equipment until they can sell it. So why do, we, why do I want to walk through, again, very briefly, the behind the scenes of how dealers buy equipment. It's to show you that at the end of the day, equipment dealerships have one goal. It is to take ownership of a piece of machinery and transfer it to you. We essentially become a middleman from the manufacturer. We don't want to hold on to equipment any longer than we have to, and we want to get your name on it. We want to get it into your shed, into your garage, into your barn, and have your name be put on it and you working with the machine. So how does that work? Obviously, you buy the machine, so you come in, you write a check to Nolts for what we are asking for it, and you now own that piece of machinery. It is yours. Or you can finance it. So you come in, you go through the application process with the finance company. We use DLL for a lot of our tractors around here, or Sheffield Financial is another one that maybe a lot of you have heard of. You go through the application with that finance company, and you buy that piece of equipment. So now that's yours as well, right? Well, sort of. So one very oversimplified way of looking at the financing process is this. You come into the dealership, you decide that you want this piece of equipment, you go through the application process, you get approved to finance that equipment. On the back end, essentially what's happening is the finance company is going to buy the machine for you and then let you borrow it or use it until you pay them back for it. Uh, again, very oversimplified. There's a lot of other things that go involved with that. but. The finance company is buying the piece of equipment, you're borrowing it from them and paying them back until you have paid off what they originally had paid for it. Now, the finance company is not going to be there with you on your farm or on your property while you are using the machine. So they want to make sure that while they're not watching you use this piece of equipment that they've technically paid for, that it's taken care of. That in the event that something crazy happens, that the barn catches fire or um, a, a flood comes through or a tornado, that something happens that that piece of machinery is a total loss and cannot be recovered, that their money can be recovered because they still own, they don't own that equipment, but they have money invested into it that they wanna make sure they can get out of it in the event that something happens to it. That is where the insurance comes into play. We are now finally to the insurance process. Just to recap really quick though, dealerships either borrow equipment from the manufacturer and sell it as fast as they can or so that they don't have to pay interest on it, or they pay cash for it outright. Either way, in either of those scenarios, the dealer wants to take ownership of that piece of equipment and transfer it to somebody else as quickly as possible so that they are not tied up with it. Now, when that dealership wants to transfer that ownership, it happens in, again, one of two ways. They either sell it to you outright for cash and it's now yours, or they finance it to you through a finance company who, again, very overview, not very detailed at all. They essentially buy the machine for you, allow you to use it while you pay them back for it. In the scenario where we're financing the machine, because there is now another party involved who has put money forward to make sure that you can have this piece of equipment. They want to make sure that their checkbook is covered in the event that something happens to the machine, that they don't lose their money. That's where insurance comes into play. We can finally talk about insurance. So when it comes to the insurance that you're going to get on your piece of equipment, I wanna make sure that we communicate very quickly that we don't look at this insurance like the insurance that we have on our cars, on our trucks. It's, it's a completely different type of policy. 
on your auto insurance, you're going to have coverages like liability. You're going to have comprehensive coverage. You're gonna have collision damage coverage. On your piece of equipment that you have financed, there's one thing that the finance company wants to make sure is insured ultimately, and that is their checkbook. The coverage that you are getting through this insurance policy is solely to cover the cost of the machine in the event that something happens that it is a total loss. They're not insuring anybody that gets hurt while using the machine. They're not insuring that you run it into a tree and put a dent in the fender. They are only making sure that in the event that the piece of machinery is a total loss, that their checkbook is still made whole. So where does that insurance come from? And I think this is where a lot of times, I mentioned it earlier, I think this is where a lot of times we as sales guys, oftentimes, or sales ladies, oftentimes kind of forget to bring it up because in our heads it's so simple because we have seen how this works a, a thousand times. We understand that nine times out of 10, you already have this insurance and you don't even know it. Um, so let's, let's talk about that really quick. How do you have insurance already that you don't even realize that you have? So remember when we went back and we read through some of those insurance agreements that are in the finance contracts, and it talks about either providing your own insurance or signing up with the finance company for the insurance that they're offering. When they're talking about providing your own insurance, guys, a lot of times, like I said, you already have that coverage and you don't even realize it. If you own a home, you're required to have a homeowner's insurance policy. If you are renting a home, you're required to have a renter's policy. Again, both of those I have experience with writing. And because of that, I can speak to the fact that there's a number in those policies that most people don't even realize is there. And it is your personal property protection number. On every homeowner's policy, there is a personal property protection number that is already built in. It's line C on your insurance policy. On every renter's policy, that's really the, the gist of a renter's policy, actually, is your personal property protection coverage. But there's a coverage on your renter's policy also called a personal property protection coverage. Now, how does that number get in, come into play? Did, you didn't even know that you had it. Most times on a homeowner's insurance policy, that number is 50% of the overall coverage of the homeowner's policy. Now, not to go crazy on homeowner's insurance and put on my homeowner's insurance salesman hat really quick, but whenever, this is something that, that, again, this is something else that oftentimes gets missed. When we're buying a home, same thing that the, that the finance company for the equipment wants to make sure that their asset is covered. The mortgage company, when you're financing your home through a mortgage, wants to make sure that their asset is covered. So when you get your insurance policy for your homeowners, oftentimes the, the mortgage company will tell you, hey, you need to have insurance for $250,000 to cover the cost of your home. So you walk into your local state farm agent or you walk into your local Allstate agent and you say, hey, my mortgage company told me that I need $250,000 worth of coverage for this homeowner's policy because you want to hurry up, you want to get the documents signed and you want to get moved in. The insurance company comes out, they get you an insurance policy for $250,000. You don't care about any of the other numbers. You sign on the dotted line, you move in, everything is honky dory. Until now you are going to buy a tractor and the salesman tells you that you need insurance. And that number is already taken care of in your homeowner's insurance policy. Again, most times it starts out at about 50% of that total coverage. So on a $250,000 homeowner's insurance policy, you're gonna have about $125,000 worth of personal property protection. Now, that seems like a lot of money, but start to think through all of the personal property that you have, all of your furniture, your TVs, um, your pots, your pans, your ovens, your microwaves, your refrigerators, your clothes, everything that you have that is yours inside of that home falls under that personal property protection coverage. Now your tractor or your lawnmower or your garden tractor or your UTV, all of those things are going to fall under that personal property protection number. So that is why I say specifically on this item to make sure that you go to your insurance agent and just make sure that you have enough coverage on that line item to cover the piece of equipment that you're talking about. Now on your renter's policy, where most of that policy is your personal property protection coverage, again, you wanna make sure that you have enough to cover both all of your personal belongings as well as the cost of the piece of equipment that you're now purchasing. So what are you supposed to do if either A, you don't think you have enough of that personal property protection coverage built into your homeowner's or renter's policy, or B, you just don't feel like messing with your homeowner's or renter's policy? Well, there is another option. You can elect most times, I, through DLL specifically, when you're buying a Coyote machine or uh, one of the other pieces of equipment that we finance with DLL, you can buy a insurance policy from them specifically during the financing process. Uh, now, that is it's important to know that that policy will cover just the machinery that you have on that deal. Um, but 
typically speaking, uh, on the deals that, that I've seen, most of the time it's only another $15 to $25 a month. Um, so it is available to buy from the finance company. It only covers the piece of machinery itself, whereas your personal property protection coverage covers everything in your home. This would be specific to your machine. Guys, insurance can be confusing. I, I've rambled on a good bit about a lot of things. I've talked about a lot of numbers. I want to recap very quickly. Again, from salesmen across the country, I apologize. <laughs> we do not do a very good job of explaining this to you as you are buying your equipment. Uh, we Again, we get to the end of the contract, we're signing paperwork and we see that we need to write down our homeowner's policy or our renter's insurance policy information and we start to freak out a little bit because, wait a minute, the, the, ultimately what we think in our heads is that there's additional cost involved. Um, and again, I think that not to defend our, our lack of explanation, but I think it's because in our heads, nine times out of 10, we, we've seen Seen that it's no additional cost it just it automatically you don't even have to do anything you just fill out the information and you're good to go but from the consumer standpoint you guys want to know what is going on and that was hopefully what I was able to explain to you today is that in every situation where somebody is transferring ownership of a piece of equipment to somebody else, they want to make sure that they are covered. Whether that is the manufacturer lending it, lending it essentially to the uh, equipment dealership while it's on their lot, and if it's here for too long, they start to charge interest, or it is when the equipment dealership sells it to you, they either sell it to you at full price for cash where you write us a check or you give us cash and now it's yours completely and we don't have to worry about it except for the servicing obviously. Uh, or you finance it and now we transfer that ownership to basically the finance company where they essentially they pay for the machine for you and they allow you to use it while you pay them back for it. In any of those situations, there's money being traded between folks, there is ownership of machinery being traded between folks, and there are people involved who wanna make sure that their checkbooks are covered. So, specifically when you finance a piece of equipment, they're going to want you to have some sort of insurance on your machine. Again, typically speaking, nine times out of 10, that coverage is already built into your homeowner's insurance policy under the personal protection coverage. Again, on your homeowner's, it's line C. On your renter's insurance, that is, basically the entirety of your rentals and rental insurance um, there's no liability coverage there's no collision there's no comprehensive it's fit literally just in case there is a total loss on the machine that the finance company can still recoup their costs you don't now owe the finance company the difference um, again it covers the machine in the event of a total loss most times it's at no extra cost to you uh, on again nine times out of ten it's already built into your homeowner's policy there's enough coverage there to cover it you're good to go we just need to have have the contact information for your insurance agent so that we can communicate to them that you're putting a tractor on your property. Uh, in the event that you don't want to do that, you can buy the insurance from the finance company. Again, usually it's very inexpensive, $15 to $25, depending on the size of the tractor, or the size of the UTV. It, it varies, but very rarely do we see anything more expensive than, than about $25 a month additional cost. It all rolls into your financing. Guys, it can be a very simple process. We unfortunately Unfortunately, tend to make it very complicated and I hope that I have helped with that today. Make sure you subscribe below. We'll see you next time.